Hello, I'm your everyday average Jonathan. Join me this week as I turn this and this into this, a gothic torch. Hello, I'm your everyday average Jonathan. I'm an ordinary guy with ordinary tools making extraordinary items. I'm a self-taught craftsman. I'm an amateur blacksmith and a novice woodworker. I have no professional training and the most basic set of tools that I've cobbled together over the years. Each week I take you on a build project with me. I show you my process, I show you my perspective. I don't edit out any of my mistakes. I don't edit out any of my aha moments. The goal each week is to demonstrate that anyone with a basic set of tools, a lot of curiosity, a lot of mistakes, and a lot of hard-won knowledge can also create interesting projects, outlandish items, things that you might have thought were out of reach or just too difficult. The items that I make each week tend to be whimsical in nature, fantastical, echoing times of a forgotten yore, if you will. Items like weapons and armor, novelties, implements and tools, practical items that I use on my ranch here in Colorado each week. This week, I am ridiculously excited for some reason. I'm going to begin to build a medieval torch. You know one of those pieces of wood with a large basket metal basket on the top that holds a fire that the people in ancient times in medieval Europe and, and before would use to light their ways at night to light their hallways and their corridors and their castles and their homes. Well that's what I'm going to be building and I'm not certain why but it just makes me extremely excited to get involved in this project. So without further ado let's get to the shop and get started. So the word torch comes from the old French torche, I believe that's how it's pronounced, which means something twisted, and in this case it would be a, a piece of cloth that is twisted around a stick. And then later on it became this metal basket that held a fire as you see here, and then you have everything from a, a tiki torch which holds a reservoir of fuel and a wick, and then the most famous torch in the world of course is the torch that the Statue of Liberty holds high. I had this old piece of wood, really old piece of wood, and it was an actual handle for something, and I believe it was a handle for an old, what is called a PV. It's an old logger's tool or woodworker's tool for rolling big logs. I had been wanting to use this piece of wood for some time, so I'm really glad that I finally found a great uh, application for it. Now I'm gonna be creating the metal banding. This is going to be a seven-sided uh, shape, a seven-sided basket, if you will. Side note here, seven-sided objects are very curious to me, they're very interesting to me because they don't occur in nature, whereas everything else does, from a triangle to a square to pentagon, hexagon, all the way even including an octagon, but a seven-sided shape does not. Also, it's kind of fascinating that a seven-sided shape has two names. It can either be a heptagon or a septagon, and then of course the octagon for eight-sided shape, and then you say, well, Jonathan, what about the nonagon, a nine-sided shape in nature? And my answer to that is now you're just being silly. I have made several things in the past that were seven-sided. I really enjoyed them. The angle for those of you geometry nerds, if you're going to connect something to make it uh, become a seven-sided uniform shape is 51.4, I believe. Of course it is. Going farther with that seven-sided shape uh, diatribe, if you will, is things that are uncommon to the eye. I seek to do those both in angles, in measurements, in the thickness of things that I, that I choose to make. I don't want something that looks common. I want something that draws you, that says, this has more girth, more heft, more presence. Certainly nothing wrong with uh, things that have 45 degree angles or 90 degree angles or common uh, material thicknesses like a two by four, but uh, that's just my choice and my observation on the things that I create. Also, normally I draw things out. I make several sketches, if not many sketches, of what I wanted to do on, on anything that I'm making. And on this particular item, I did make some sketches, but in the end, I thought I was just going to sort of eyeball it because I could bend the metal back to what I wanted it to be if it didn't end up becoming appealing to me. Uh, what I came up with is I made one form first, one of these pieces of, uh, I, I guess you would call them bars, in the basket first. And then I looked at it, looked at it, and I said, make some tweaks here and there and that will be the form that I match the other seven uh, or I should say six ribs of the basket to. Most of this I bent by hand just because I wasn't quite certain how to get that form correct. I did try the swage block initially uh, but as you see here just bending it by hand uh, was worked out just fine. 
Each of these ribs, I wanted to give it a little bit of personality towards the top. As many of you have seen me do in my other builds, I do like to twist metal. I think once I put a point on something and I make it twisted, it gives it a little bit more of a gothic, maybe gruesome, but definitely archaic and refined look to it. And here are all those ribs ready to go. There were several parts of this build that I wasn't sure how I was going to do, and in some ways I, I winged it more than I normally would, and one was how to attach the basket to the wooden handle. What it ended up going with was making a collar or a socket, and here I'm trying to cut out what is 12 gauge steel with my 10 snips. It was a failed attempt completely. I ended up using the angle grinder, matching it to the top of that wooden, wooden handle. Uh, then what I wanted to do was make sure I had a way to attach those, those basket bands, as, as I mentioned, that protects the wood from the fire, but also doesn't make Swiss cheese of the top of that handle by putting bolt after bolt or screw after screw through it. I needed to have one uniform way to attach it. So making the collar uh, and attaching the bands to the collar was what I chose to do. If you've seen my other builds, you'll see that I gravitate towards the textured hammered look on the metal objects because I, I desperately want it to look used earthen, worn, battle-worn, as if you pulled it directly out of a tomb of some old crypt that very day. Well, from the looks of it, clearly my uh, estimation of tolerances was, was off on this, so I needed to bring in another uh, piece of metal that I could there uh, then weld to it. And I couldn't get my clamps around this piece of metal, and the way I had it clamped, I couldn't get it to touch my fab table. So I, uh, I did some hillbilly engineering and just held the clamp with my hand straight against the device, got it tack welded up. Worked surprisingly well, and I am patting myself on the back for that. There was a moment when I was welding that I noticed the smell of something burning that wasn't inert. And yeah, the little spark just danced its way down uh, between the, my tufts of hair adroitly to my scalp. And I smelt that. I didn't feel it. Otherwise, I would have screamed in pain and run shrieking into the woods. I didn't put a ton of effort into refining the socket. It's going to be almost entirely covered up by the banding that I'm going to put on there. And I left my uh, my fabric tape measure somewhere. I couldn't find it. So, yep, yeah, had to use this little piece of string, probably like the ancients actually did. You got to keep real good, tight hold of your pieces of material, or you can just do that and go chasing them. Ah, these tongs will do the job. So my plan was to make a collar that's going to go around the, 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 the handle and enclose the bottom edges of each band into them, all seven bands. That was the idea. I was thinking that I was going to then rivet this all together somehow, some way. To be quite honest, I did not put a lot of thought into this because that never was going to work, especially once I got this band made up, this collar made up and put it around the wood, getting those pieces, uh, each one of those bands to sit in there and measure it up to make sure I had the right girth. I am not dexterous enough to get that to, it remind me of a cooper, a barrel maker, uh, putting the staves of a barrel together with the banding. I've done that before and it was a, a lesson in futility for me. So what I ended up to doing instead was to just tack weld each one of these bands on. And this was actually way more work and way more my, m mental power, of which I don't have very much uh, to get it done. For, putting the first one on was easy. Just get that going, get that tack welded on there. But then getting the separation, the distance between each band around this, really what it was was having a circumference of eight and a half inches, divide that by seven, and for whatever reason, my little pea brain just could not get my mind around that. But a little bit of trial and error and it actually came out, it worked out pretty well. At this point, I realized that that collar was going to be, oh, well, you know, I'll just pick that one up and re-tack weld that on. Uh, this collar was going to actually serve a very structural purpose. So once I hammered it on and then welded it on, I welded each tine or each band, I should say, to it. Um, it actually worked out really, really well. I don't like the fact that I had to, to weld it, but I don't know a, a, a better way for something at that uh, piece in this, in this particular build. And here we go with uh, painter's tape. So my friend Jeff sent me this 3M painter's tape, tape promising me that it's going to be a lot better than the painter's tape I was using. I'm pretty sure he lied. And in doing so, painter's tape has another casualty. It has fractured my relationship with my friend Jeff irreparably.
as with most things that I do, I was gonna add spikes to this just to give it a little bit more of a gruesome look to it. My, my thought was this, that if you look at a basket torch hanging on a wall, it has many, many similarities to that of a mace or a morning star. So why not make it something that you could also pull off the wall and clobber somebody with as a weapon just in case? I think it would be rude not to. I'm not gonna go into detail here, but this was another design flaw on my part. I thought I was going to rivet through each one of these bands to the, the enclosure that I'm, that I'm creating here. I'm gonna wrap a, another band, another strap around this entire thing. And I thought I was gonna rivet through both of those uh, and then rivet this thing together. And that was, I was just dead wrong. It didn't, they didn't line up, it didn't turn out good. And then I just decided to make the teeth, I should say the, the spikes, uh, I just used those for the pins and I welded them from, from the backside. If that made no sense, it's because it, it shouldn't have made any sense. Design flaw number 97, I had thought I was gonna make a ring instead of this seven-sided band that you see that I'm making here. I thought I was gonna be able to capture that with a metal strap that's just a ring. It would not have worked uh, because these weren't exactly uniform in how far they came out from the center of the circle. So basically I had to create a, a septagon uh, out, of, out of pieces of metal. It was kind of a fun process, but it wasn't expected. And here what I'm doing is I'm going to be making these spikes. There's going to be seven of them, of course, and I'm just going to profile them on the, on the, the, the sander here and then cut them off with the chop saw one at a time. I should pause to say the piece of metal that I selected for the spikes was I think from an old farm or old tractor or old buggy somewhere. It was so hard, so hard. I had to change the sanding belt to get a brand new piece of, of 24 grit sandpaper on there. And then I went to put threads on this and I'm not making this up that my, my thread cutter couldn't cut into it. It flat out would just not, not work at all. I tried all sorts of things, spent probably an hour trying to cut those threads. Ultimately, I didn't cut any. I just inserted each one of these spikes into the hole that I had already pre-drilled and then welded it from the backside. And it actually, it, that turned out pretty good. So here it is. Like I said, if you took this off of your wall and you were the king of castle and you needed to clobber some with it, it would absolutely do the job. All right, this is a piece of my design that actually worked well. What I was gonna do is, is I was gonna capture two birds with one stone. I'm going to pre-drill this, but I'm also gonna insert a lag screw through the top that's going to cinch this, this collar down into the wooden handle. But on that lag screw, I'm going to weld you're gonna, you'll see it when you see it. It looks kind of like a twisted cross, uh, but something that's gonna hold the the sinew, the linen, the material that I'm gonna use as the wick, as the actual uh, thing that's gonna hold the fuel. You'll you'll understand when you see it. I keep pieces of twisted metal, of thorny metal, of spikes. I keep them in this little bin here because I will often come back and use it like I am here. And I'm just gonna cut up some of these and make a little bit of a cross out of there. And you'll see how that's gonna capture and hold that, uh, that linen here in a second. I say linen, it's a shop towel. Now that 3 8 lag screw, I already drilled down into that. So all I have to do is attach this interesting twisted cross. Uh, I'm just welding it to the top of that, making sure that it looks about right. And, uh, and, and there you have it. You have the collar that is attached to the wooden handle, and then you have something that's gonna hold that material with at the same time. Uh, I did paint it black, touched up this handle a little bit more, and made sure that, uh, that it was fully torched. There's two things that I was debating doing here for fuel and for wicking. One, I heard that uh, the tallow, uh, animal fat essentially, was coated on fabric and that was what the, the substance that burnt was. Or wax, I heard that you could, the, they said that the more affluent, richer lords would coat their, their material in beeswax and that would hold the flame for a very long time. For some reason, and I don't know why, I have this tiki tor torch fuel just sitting in my shop in my little burn chest. Um, I ended up using that and I thought enough, Jeff would be proud of me here, to actually put on nitrile gloves so that I didn't get the fuel on my hands because I was going to like this. Normally, I don't think that far in advance, but yeah, uh, I'm proud that I did that. I have not seen any other records, I'm sure that there are, of, of ways that they capture the wick, the giant wick that I'm putting into here. That cross that I keep talking about that I made did a great job. I could secure it, I could puncture it, uh, and then here we go. We light that sucker up and it looks good. I'm gonna turn off the shop lights and get a feel for what this thing actually uh, looks like. I really liked it. I was getting a lot out of it, thought, thought very well of myself. Then I thought, oh, 
how does one put this out? And then ensued a lot of consternation. Now I'm going to take a quick pause here for a moment and just be completely upfront and, and vulnerable with you. What I'm about to show you, I'm going to let you in on a little something that happened here. And what I'm about to show you, I'm not proud of, but it was so much fun. First idea on how to put out this flame, use the towel. To, oh, that didn't work out. Oh shoot, that caught that on fire. Oh, good thing I have a concrete floor. You know, and then I thought maybe I should take the uh, butane torch and the rest of the uh, tiki torch fuel and move them a little bit farther away from the open spewing flame. Ah, now I've got it. Put on that old welder's glove, go on in there, stick some fingers in that flame, tamp that sucker down. That'll put it right out, won't it? Yeah, just stick them right in there and see. No, nope, that didn't work out at all. Didn't do a thing. Hmm. I'm going to wander around my shop a little bit, try to, aha, grab a pair of tongs. And then I'm going to come over there and I'm going to reach into that fire and I'm going to pull out. By the way, I'm still wearing my nitrile gloves. I'm going to pull that sucker out. All of that wadding is going to come right out of there with those tongs in. Just one big yank. Uh, okay, some of it. Yeah, okay, I'm going to, okay, more of it. Step on that, put that one out. That barely worked. Okay, uh, it's out. Okay, a little bit more left and drop that. Oh, I ignited the other piece that was already on the floor. Now I'm going to have to walk over here and uh, let's see. A little more stampy stamp stamp. Ha! Ah! Who's your daddy now, fire? All right, I'm good leaving that behind us if, if you guys are. So moving on to the next piece, I was gonna make a little holder uh, for a little wall holder, kind of like a sconce to just gonna hold this torch. And so really, really simple, just uh, two rings. I, I collect rings and as you can see here, it's never, never a bad idea if you're a blacksmith to have a whole bunch of rings so that you don't have to make them. Um, and I'm gonna fashion this out of a little bit of the spare rods that I had left over from making those spikes and get that sucker uh, a wall mount. I couldn't bear to just make square uh, pieces of, of metal material be the the, the, fat, the fixture backing, if you will, uh, for these, these rings. I couldn't do it. Uh, I really didn't want to spend any more time making these things, but in the end I decided that at some point someone's going to probably look behind that torch and see what it's hanging off of and judge that. <laughs> so. Uh, here we go, making uh, making some semi-ornate, almost medieval shield looking like fixtures for the rings to be held to. And unless you are an everyday average Jonathan or an everyday average somebody, uh, you might make calculations, make measurements, uh, test fit a few things, or you can just eyeball it. And in this case, eyeballing it worked just perfectly. Something kept telling me that if this torch was ever to actually be outside, that the, the charring that I did was not going to be enough for it to be protected from the weather, so I hit it with some, uh, some linseed oil coating. And then here's what that uh, particular item looks mounted to the wall. This torch was mated for a Dread Warlord indeed, and after delivering it to the Dread Warlord, uh, it was told by many upon the mountain that he lives that he walked deep into the night using it. I'm glad that he spared my life and for my insolence in making him something and it took me so long to get him something that was basically rubbish to his hand. But if it provides to him even a modicum of illumination to his nefarious and dark deeds that the light of a full moon cannot, then my job is well done and my life can continue on knowing that I have served an evil purpose, but a purpose nonetheless. Well, thank you for joining me for that. That was, uh, that was super fun. Uh, I learned some limitations that I have. I often say that I'm an impatient man, and I, I definitely am. And I saw that impatience play out in, I think, some of the some of the difficulties I had in execution and in the layout. Okay, so some of the learnings that I had are these. I already knew this, but doing seven-sided shapes, especially in kind of a 3D format, just is, can be very, very difficult. It's difficult to line up things that might hold something that would be square or even hexagonal and then try lining up a three-dimensional object along a circle and divide that circle into seven points and have that object line up correctly on the seven points that's not so hard but then have it line up on the y-axis as well that was difficult and if that made no sense well it really didn't make much sense to me either <laughs> i just know i had difficulties there the other takeaway that i have is is a fascinating one i i really envisioned me doing more rivets 
in this, riveting this piece together. And I, I'm honestly, I'm being very honest that I'm disappointed that I didn't use rivets. I mean, that's, that's, they didn't weld back then in the same way they, they didn't have MIG welders. So they used rivets, they forged weld, but not on something like this, they used, they would use rivets. And I really thought this was going to be a riveted piece and it ended up not being that. So a better blacksmith, 100%, this would have been riveted in, instead of welded. <clears throat> I do like how it looks, that's fine. But I, 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 again, I'm, I know the shortcoming and my welds are really bad. So other than that, I really like the feel, the aesthetic, the look, and of course, playing with fire, even when you are as haphazard as I am, it's still just really, really enjoyable. So thank you for joining me for that build. Next week, I'm also ridiculously excited because I'm going to be building something called a Roman pilum or pilum. I'm not quite certain how it's pronounced, but it's a Roman spear and it's got a really interesting purpose and use case, if you will. I look forward to sharing that with you. Until then, God bless. Thank you for joining me and have a great week.